何おおいくぞーです。Hey guys, it's Jinx, and I guess I'm a Genshin math guy now. And no, before you ask, I was not the one who pulled Klee. However, Coffee over on our Discord server was the first in our server to pull a Klee. The mad lad saved up 16,000 primos free to play just to pull Klee. Now that's dedication. Unfortunately, my shadow play did not record the audio because we were all really hype in the chat when this happened. And I really enjoy sharing these kinds of funny moments or community moments at the beginning of videos, so that's probably gonna be a thing from now on. I am Eastern NA, so I still have about five more hours until Klee drops for me, at which point I will be starting up a stream. I will be seeing if I can get Klee in that stream today, but I am kind of poor because YouTube doesn't pay me out any of the donations or money you guys have given me over the past few streams until next month. Anyway, let's talk about attack percentage and why it's kind of a trap. Man, why is it in every game I cover on this channel, attack in some form or another is kind of a trap stat? So the super short TLDR, in case you just want to know the information and you don't care to actually have an in-depth analysis on it, is that anytime a weapon or an artifact says attack percent, it actually means base attack percent. Now, base attack percent is just your weapon's base attack plus your character's level-based base attack. And if you go to the character details on attributes, you can see it, it's the white number. So it's not a huge bonus to get a percent attack. Now, that doesn't mean it is necessarily bad. It's just kind of a trap because you think it's going to be total percent attack. And especially when it comes to artifact level up choices, there are generally always better options if you have them available. This basically means maxing out our feather as well as a percent damage type cup is pretty much always better than investing on a similar star level attack percent artifact. Okay, that's it for the TLDR. If that's all you cared about, peace. So let's get in depth with some maths real quick and explain what these better options actually are. So first off, I do have a video upcoming called The Big Four, which are the four things you max first to maximize a character's damage. I've actually had the script for that video on early access publicly on Google Docs for like a week now. It's just it's a very involved project, so I haven't finished editing it yet. And because of my physical condition, my editing speed is like 20 to 30% what it normally is, hence why I'm doing these easier, shorter videos first. But yeah, link to that in the description if you want to see the early access script before the video gets finished. Okay, so out of all of the artifact options for more damage that we can invest in, what is actually the highest return for resources? Well, the answer is one of the big four, your feather artifacts. Pound for pound with all things equal, the feather artifact is going to give you higher damage returns for the mora and artifacts you invest into leveling it up compared to attack percentage, basically always. In other words, if you have either a 4 or 5 star feather compared to another 4 or 5 star cup or mask or hourglass that gives you percent attack, the feather is more worth investing in. Now, when you hit late game, attack percent can start out scaling it but that's only on a very hyper carry built character with several million mora of investment in them. In fact, let's calculate exactly when you do actually get more damage out of a similarly leveled attack percent artifact. So let's look at the comparisons between max leveled 3 star, 4 star, 5 star attack percent cup or headpieces versus a feather. Now, one important thing to consider is that 5 star characters do across the board get about 100 extra base attack compared to 4 star characters at level 70 to 80. For the 5 star, we'll just use De Luke, and for the 4 star, we'll use Bennett. The actual base attack variation is pretty minimal amongst the star classes, so they work. It is also important to note that any of the attack gains from a feather artifact or other sources of flat or percentage artifact in substats for your artifacts do not count as base attack. This makes it relatively easy to calculate exactly where percent attack does beat the flat attack on feather because we only have to account for character levels and weapon levels. So if we start with the feather artifact, at 3 stars you do get 12 max levels at 123 attack. 4 star at plus 16 is 232 and 5 star at level 20 max level is 311. Now, attack percent can roll for three different artifacts, either the cup, the headpiece, or the hourglass. So at three stars, this is a max level 12, they get 23.1% extra base attack. This goes up to 34.8% at a 4 star and a 46.6% on a 5 star. So in order for the 3 star percent a base attack artifact to equal our feather in damage increase, we will need 532.47 base attack. 
Now, to put into contest exactly how much base attack this is, you need a level 60 out of 70 Ascension 4 Deluke with a level 52 prototype Animus to equal this. And now, if we're talking about a 4-star like Bennett, you would need to be a level 60 out of 70 Ascension 4 with a level 55 5-star Skywood Blade. That's right, you need a 5-star weapon to be able to get more damage out of a 3-star percent attack versus the flat attack on your feather. And if you're still using a 3-star feather or cup, head, or hourglass piece at that late game, then you got bigger problems. Speaking of late game, what does it look like if you have a 4 or a 5-star feather versus other attack percent artifacts? Well, with the way the scaling works for these, they both actually end up at about the same breakpoint of around 667, base attack for the attack percentage artifact to match your feather. Now again, in order for you to hit this, you need a 60 out of 70 Ascension 4 Deluke with a level 50 out of 60 5 star Skyward Pride. And you're not going to be outscaling with a 4 star weapon on a Deluke until you're around level 80 plus. Realistically, unless you have a 5 star weapon to buff up your base attack massively, it's just never going to happen. The feather's always better. And if we're talking about Bennett, again, level 60 out of 70 Ascension 4 Bennett with a level 70 out of 80 5 star Skyward Blade which is even more unrealistically unachievable if you don't have a 5-star weapon. But that does beg the question, if we have a 5-star weapon because we got super lucky, or we've already maxed out our feathers so we want more damage, shouldn't we build these attack percent artifacts up to get more damage? I mean, you have potentially 4 artifacts to boost your damage, so even after you max out your feather, you can still level up other stuff, right? Well, that's kind of where the other issue with base attack artifacts comes. Most of the time, you have better options if you roll them. See, the next best artifact after your feather for increasing your damage is your cup. See, the reason your cup is the next highest damage multiplier you can get is because unlike attack percentage, which is only for base attack, this is a total damage multiplier. This means that any electro damage my Keijing deals, which is 95 to 100% of her damage, is going to be 34.8% higher. Important side note though, this does not increase reaction damage, so electro shock damage doesn't go up, but also attack doesn't increase reaction damage, so it doesn't really matter. Except for vaporize, melt, and possibly shatter, but those are completely different types of reactions, and I'll be covering that in a later video. And as far as I know, for those reactions, the percent damage bonus also applies to them anyway, so it's a moot point. Now, when we're comparing elemental damage bonus percentage to the attack percentage, it actually has the exact same for every single level. However, physical damage percentage is exactly 25% higher across the board every level. Which makes sense because skills and ults cannot do physical damage, so even Razor, who is the best physical carry in the game, currently still deals about 90-95% to physical damage end game. Now, if your character is someone like Keijin, Dai Luke, Chong Yun, or any caster carry, or any support or sub carry you have who exclusively pop skills and does not auto attack for physical damage, element percent up is 100% always better. Because the element percent up damage bonus is going to apply to 100% of the damage you deal while attack percent only applies to the base attack portion. This means on your sub carries, your supports, your officials, your kayas, your Jianglings, all of these characters do better with element percent because they aren't auto attacking for physical damage anyway. Anemo characters are a little weirder because Swirl doesn't scale with either element percent or attack percent. However, Venti and Sucrose Alt do get elemental damage infusions of Swirl elements, which complicates the formula. I'll probably cover that later in a different video. And generally speaking, for Anemo supports, you're aiming for a Venera set above anything else, and then you're just stack on as much EM as you can possibly fit. With a maxed out feather because again it's just the best single damage increase. So now the only question is when we have a character that deals mixed damage so basically your carry who is going to be mixing physical and elemental damage when is the attack percent better? Well on your god carries like Keijing, Chong Yun, and Dai Luke it's pretty much never. If you're playing those characters correctly, you should be dealing 100% to maybe 90% elemental damage, so attack percent is just never better. And because the other god tier carry, Razor is a physical carry who normally runs a superconductor build to do more physical damage, even though every attack does do electro with his ult, you're dealing like 5-10% to of your damage as electro. So again, physical, basically always better. But now we get into the more complicated ones. So let's say we have a Bennett Ascension 4 carry, we have an Anemo or Geo MC carry, we have a Zhang Ling carry with Crescent Pike. 
or if you want to run a bow carry like an Amber or a Fischl or a Venti who focuses on auto attacks and not focusing on charge attacks, which I don't personally recommend because physical bow carries are strictly worse than melee carries. They just don't have the motion values per second, but hey, you do you. So for these characters, we do have a lot of physical damage output coming from our basic auto attacks, but we also have elemental damage on our skills. While the general rule of thumb for any of these kinds of carries is that generally speaking, a physical percentage cup is going to be better than elemental or attack. Chances are, if you're running something like a bow carry who focuses on auto attacks, you're running either compound bow or you're going to be running rust. Similarly, if you're running Xiang Ling, you're definitely running Crescent Pike. If you're not, stop and go build a Crescent Pike, it's actually busted. The only reason I consider Xiang Ling a god tier carry of a similar level to Kei Jing, Dai Luke, as well as Razor and Chong Yun is because Crescent Pike is really busted and comparable to 5 star weapons and damage output. And of course, if you're using a longsword carry who is not Keijing, so like MC or something, you're probably using prototype Rancor because it's free and really good for carries. This means that your physical damage is already getting really stacked from the substats on those, and adding more on top of it is technically additive, but is going to be better than attack percentage most of the time. The reason for this is because you're going to be spending most of your time on your carry just auto-attacking while all the skills on your entire team are on cooldown. Now, if we assume that the total attack percentage of your base attack is only 30%, which is pretty reasonable for endgame builds, this means on your carry, 76% of your damage has to come from elements, otherwise physical percentage is better than attack percentage. Now, this does go down by a few percents to around 70-65% if you are running something like Prototype Rancor that has physical damage percentage already, but either way, 60 to 65% of your damage is not physical on your carry is really not realistic for these kinds of carries. Now, if we are looking at a 50% of your total attack is base attack, which is pretty realistic for mid-game around level 50 to 60 or so, then 60% of your damage on your carry has to be elemental in order for you to want to run attack percent instead of physical percent cups. And then when we go to around a 70% of your total attack percent is base attack, which is only realistic at mid-early game if you have like a 5-star weapon, then you still need 44% of your damage on your physical carry to be elemental damage for it to be better to run attack percent than physical percentage up. Which, generally speaking, isn't going to be happening unless you're playing your carry very poorly. But this is assuming an equal comparison. What does it look like if we, say, have a 4-star attack percent cup and only a 3-star electro damage percent cup. Well, this is where the argument for running attack percent gets a little bit more realistic for some characters. So your 90 to 100% elemental damage carriers like Keijing, Deluk, Chong Yun, etc. pretty much will still always be running the percent damage type that's appropriate because it's simply just going to be better. However, our split damage carries get a little bit more nuanced. So if we have a 4 star attack percent artifact and only a 3 star of the appropriate damage type, then you can see that the more our base attack makes up a percentage of our total attack percentage, we actually can start seeing a reason to run attack percent artifacts instead. When your base attack makes up 70% of your total attack, it is strictly better to run an attack percentage artifact on your cup over a damage type artifact. However, getting 70% of your total attack as base attack is not really realistic unless you're early game and have a 5 star weapon. At least on your carry, who is who we're discussing right now because they're the ones who actually do deal some split damage. The more realistic breakpoints are at around 30% to 50% because 30% is what an end end game carry looks like at level 60, 70, 80 and 50% is more mid game of like 40 through 60. So we can ignore the elemental percentage because as I established earlier it's basically still always better on your elemental damage pure carries to be running an elemental percentage. However, when we have our mixed damage carries at a 4 star attack percent versus a 3 star physical percentage you need 64% of your damage to be not physical damage on that carry. At that point, attack percent is better. This is still kind of unrealistic unless you're running a super low cooldown team so you don't really get to auto attack too much because you're constantly cycling through your teammates every 5 to 7 seconds. At 50% of attack percentage is going to be base attack, we need about 40% of our damage to be non-physical for it to be better to run attack percentage cups. Again, unless you're building your carry poorly and playing your carry poorly, this is unlikely to happen, but it is a case-by-case -case basis. Now, if we have a 5-star attack percentage cup versus a 4 star physical percentage cup, it actually is more in the physical damage percentage cup's favor because of how the scaling works. So again, generally speaking, it's still better to run the physical percentage damage cup, but it's case by case. 
Okay, so the flat attack on feather is better than percent attack artifacts. The cup damage percentage type is better than percent attack artifacts, but we still have the circlet as well as the hourglass, right? These can both still roll percent attack, so we should roll percent attack on them, right? Well, the answer is sort of. This one is a lot more nuanced and case by case because the circlet or headpiece can roll for crit stats, which are generally better endgame, but it is extremely case by case. See, the thing is, crit, unlike the base attack percentage, is a total damage multiplier, but your starting crit stats suck in this game. Every single character starts with 5% crit chance as well as a 50% bonus damage on crits. This is incredibly low, so unless you already have a bunch of crit stats in your build, building more crit generally isn't worth it versus attack percentage. However, once you are endgame, it is very possible for you to have a lot of crit stats accidentally. This is because of the randomly rolled substats on your artifacts. See, the attack substats kind of really suck. Not only do they not apply to base attacks, so they even scale with base attack percentage anyway, but the most I've ever seen is a flat plus 60 or a 6% extra base attack, which is really bad. By an incredibly stark contrast, I have 28% crit damage on this feather. If this is in my build, it propels my crit damage stats significantly higher than base attack percent could ever imagine to be. But crit math is really complicated, and I could spend 10 plus minutes talking about what the breakpoints are for attack percent versus crit, what standard deviation looks like in terms of having consistency on damage, etc, etc, so I'll just make another video about that later. The point is, crit can still be much better than attack percentage on your headpiece, meaning you're probably better off investing in a crit mask over an attack percent mask. Now, for the hourglass, that's a bit of a different story. The hourglass is by far the safest thing to invest in an attack percentage artifact on because its comparison artifact stats aren't as good. The only other damage stat you can get is elemental mastery. Now, on certain builds and team comps, it is actually better to get elemental mastery over attack percent because you're spamming so many reactions. And also you can roll energy recharge, which can be very good on certain alt wombo combo team comps. But again, discussing elemental mastery where you want it in your team comp on which characters, as well as how it works and reactions in general, is something I could spend 20 minutes talking about, so future video. It is also important to note that if you do not have percent attack as a substat for your weapon, and you are not running percent attack on any of your other artifacts, that is when you start hitting the 70% or so of your total attack is base attack. So generally speaking, an attack percentage hourglass is kind of the go-to. Now, all of this being said, this is all still under the assumption that everything is equal. The reality is, we get random artifacts. So, would I prefer to have a 5-star gladiator headpiece for my Keijing that is crit chance instead? I f***ing would but I don't got one, and the chance of me getting one is incredibly low. So I'm just gonna level up this attack percentage one because it's still damage gain. However, if I had to choose between this and the crit chance percentage, or I had to choose between the electro damage percentage cup versus a, an attack percentage cup, I will always pick the one that is better. And that was pretty much the entire point of this video, was to explain to you what the better options are for attack percentage artifacts if you have them available. Alright, that is it for the video. I tried to go in depth with this while cutting out as much as possible, so we are hitting just under 20 minutes. I would have preferred around 15, but there's just too much math to cover. Thank you so much as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed the content and you learned something new, and you learned why attack percentage is in fact kind of a trap stat, then be sure to like the video, comment, and share it with your friends. All of these just kind of push it up in the SEO so more people can see the video. If you have any particular questions for me, be sure to check out our Discord server, The Mathlos Nest. I hang out there quite a bit, but if I'm not there, just feel free to ping me in chat. We have a slowly growing but very cool Genshin community there, so be sure to come join us. And of course, none of this would be possible with the generosity of our patrons, who did continue to patron us while I was on like a four month break from making videos for my mental and physical health reasons. I know that I say this every video, but y'all the best. Alright, I will be streaming later because Klee is coming out, and we'll see if I can roll for her. Unfortunately, I don't get the YouTube money until next month on the 20th, so I'm kinda broke, but we'll see what we can do. Either way, I'll be doing some general adventuring, trying to get to AR40 and answering any of your questions in chat about any gaming math, about how to build your characters, about any of your team comps, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, and YouTube will let you know as soon as I'm live. Also, hitting the notification bell tells you when my new videos come out, which is pretty neat. Alright, happy waifu hunting whalers, we'll see you guys later tonight. Bye!